Um, okay, I think you've said before that you view Romans 2 as hypothetical. How do you interpret other passages that speak of judgment according to works? So uh, Romans 2, I do take as hypothetical. And, you know, we could demonstrate that from the text. I may I thought about doing something like I did with Romans 7 when I just kind of looked at different interpreters, what their reasons were for coming to those conclusions and, and getting into the text itself and why I believe what I do about Romans 2. I think that would be worth doing at some point, so I, I may be doing that. Um, in, in Romans 2, I, I would say this. it It's setting up an argument. It's in the context of Paul's argument um, that is setting up basically the inability of man to be justified by works of the law. So specifically because Romans 2 uses that language of justification and law, that really is, is I think, key to understanding why that passage is then different from some of the other passages that do sp speak about a judgment according to works. So scripturally, there is judgment according to works. I mean, there is no doubt. You look at Matthew 24, you know, you look at in 1 Corinthians, you look at, there, there are so many passages that speak about judgment according to works. So there, there is no question at all that the that our works play a role in the final judgment. I mean, you could even see in the book of Revelation that the, the saints are clothed in white. And one of the reasons why the saints are covered in white is because of the blood of the lamb cleansing us, or cleansing us from our sin. And you know, as good Lutherans, we grab onto that passage, of course. But another place in Revelation, we're told that the, the clothing is actually the good works of the saints. And that, what does that mean? Aren't we covered by the blood of Christ and his merit? Like, what about the good work? What about our good works? What are you saying? Do we get to heaven because of our good works? Okay. Um, so, so when you think about this question, look back to a lot of the early Lutheran writers. They all recognize, of course, that the works play, play a, a role uh, in the final judgment. Absolutely. Melanchthon is clear about this. Read his apology. I think if you want to see a good uh, place in the confessions that deals with this question. Um, but also look at commentaries. Look at our uh, Lutheran commentary series. I think if you look at those commentators in the way that they explain the passages of, of judgment according to works are, are really helpful. So what you find in some, I would say, reductionist kinds of Lutheranism is a kind of explaining away the passages. And what we cannot do, and what Lutheran theologians haven't done historically, is grab onto the passages that talk about judgment according to works and just say, oh, those are all hypothetical. And you know, they all just say that we're judged according to our works, but we don't have good works. We have the good works of Christ imputed to us, and that's it. That's not being honest with the context in those texts. I will say that Romans 2 is, is hypothetical. And the reason I make that argument is because is, is from a contextual position, right? I'm, I'm arguing that this is part of the overall argument that Paul is making. That's not the case with, with many other passages. So we've got to be honest with what the passages are talking about. So the point is this, when we're looking at, at the final judgment, there's no doubt about the fact that believers have good works. There's no doubt about the fact that faith works. Faith has fruit. Luther talks about this explicitly, um, Just, but that's just obvious according to scripture. I mean, this is one of Luther's favorite things to talk about is this uh, imagery of the tree and its fruit. We have to be made a good tree first. We have to have faith first. Good works flow out of, out of that faith. So the question of um, the role of works at the final judgment is not do they play a role, but what is the role that they play? And what I would say is this, that the role of good works in the final judgment is demonstrative. It, it, it demonstrates whose we are. It is true that those who have good works are the saints, right? Those who, it is true that those who do good will enter eternal life. And why is it that we will enter into eternal life for doing good? Well, you do have to see it in the overall context of everything scripture says. So our sins have been forgiven. Our sins are not imputed because we're in Christ. And if that's true, that our sins are not imputed because um, we are in Christ, that all that God sees when he looks in us is our good works as they are cleansed from our sin, right? So God sees Christ when he sees us, but it doesn't mean he doesn't also see our good works. He does, but he sees them as they are in Christ. So as our good works are in Christ, all of the imperfections, all of the bad motives, all of the, the mess ups that we have, all of that's taken care of. It was placed on the cross. So um, now God does see us as, yeah, um, those who do good works. So in that way, at the final judgment, it, there is no doubt in my mind that good works play, play a role. Um, that doesn't mean that there's like a scale of good and bad or something like that. It's like your good works outweigh your bad works. Uh, but our sins have been taken care of. 
They're not imputed, so they're not counted. So all there is is a judgment of here are the righteous things we have done. And as those righteous things um, are done uh, in our lives, those are manifest at the final at the final judgment. So the role of works at the final judgment then means it's not like a thing that we have to be worried that we haven't done enough because you're kind of missing the point. Um, but it is that those who are in Christ will produce good works. There's no doubt about that. They do play a role in the final judgment. Uh, at some point, I would really like to delve into the specific passages and go text by text. So that may be something that, that we will do in the future. It's something I've certainly thought about. Um, okay. Okay.